Dear Diary, this weekend, I made a grifter mask. Welcome back to Building Steam. Today's episode, a build diary of this guy. Pointed right. Hey guys, Brian Fadrosh from Brian Fadrosh Designs. Welcome back down to the shop. So as I said, we're going to be doing a build diary of this guy, him. Um, I built the grifter mask over the weekend. It was kind of on a lark. Uh, what I tend to do every so often is I'll give myself a challenge. Go through my scrap bin and see what I can build. I've been wanting to build grifter for a while now. And ever since Shilla gave me this wonderful green uh, long coat um, that is steampunk style, Seemed like a great opportunity to bring Grifter to life. Uh, so we're going to go step by step in how I built him. And first and foremost, we have to get material. I hold on to the leftover pieces I have from previous builds, and I usually store them in no particular order off to the side. Now, doing a project like this forces me to call out that pile and force myself to work with what I got. Since I only had like 3% of a plan, I figured I would grab whatever 5 and 2 millimeter foam I had available. And obviously, I should have plenty. So after collecting all my materials together, I needed to decide on a pattern for this build. I needed something that would allow me to add some additional facial features and structure for underneath the fabric portion of the mask. Instead of free handing out a helmet pattern, I decided on using a modified version of the Heroes Workshop Red Hood mask I've used before. It would already give me the cheekbone structure I wanted, and with a few more additional modifications, should let me do what I had in mind around the eyes, as well as adding in a nose piece, which should be easy enough. It was clear I was going to have plenty of 5mm HD foam to work with. I didn't want it to be too thick, as the understructure was supposed to be my actual head and face, not really a helmet. I only printed out the left side of the pattern since I wanted it to be symmetrical. It was just basically meant I needed to flip a majority of the pattern pieces over to get the opposite side. I like transferring all my pattern pieces over all at the same time to make sure I don't miss any, same way as I like cutting all of my pieces out at the same time so I can make sure I'm doing consistent cuts. One of the reasons I thought the pattern would work out so well is there are a number of 45 degree angle cuts that would give the understructure a much more organic look when I put the fabric part on. Now, usually I would cut those out on my scroll saw, but I decided to practice doing it by hand instead this time. The other thing that I wanted to mention is the fact that the black gloves that I'm wearing are not my attempt at a safety precaution. I used a ballpoint pen to transfer over the pattern and didn't want to get ink all over the pieces or my hands. Besides, I was going to be gluing them all together soon anyway. Once I have all the pieces cut out, but before I start gluing anything together, I like laying out the pattern in the order of assembly. I find it easier to work with smaller sections at a time. For this build, it was easier to start with the forehead and face section. I obviously wasn't going to end up using the very top of the helmet, but I figured building the helmet in its entirety first would allow me to figure out where I would cut the top of the head off, and it also let me to start deciding on how I was going to handle having to put it on and off without losing too much of the other details. So my personal preference of contact cement is DAP weld wood, but regardless of what contact cement you're using, you always want to make sure you're wearing a respirator when doing so because of the fumes that are coming off the product. Now there is the classical debate among foam smiths as to which contact cement is correct or best to use, that being between DAP weld wood and barge. I personally have never used barge. Um, I always use DAP weld wood. There's three reasons for that basically. One, I'm impatient, and if I run out of contact cement, I can get DAP weld wood literally at three different places easily within 20 minutes of home. Two, I hate spending a lot of money, and barge is definitely more expensive. Now, don't get me wrong, what I know of it, it's certainly worth the additional cost, but I always try to find the most economic method for my builds, because, you know, I got mortgages and stuff. <laughs> And finally, third, everyone says I should just use barge, and I hate being told what to do, so I don't. Um, and honestly, that's what you should be doing when you're choosing what contact cement you want to work with. Whether it be barge or DAP, they both go on exactly the same way. So basically use whatever works for you. 
So now that all the glue's been applied to all the pieces that we want to put together and have waited the subsequent five to 10 minutes to let it set, we can start sticking this stuff together. And this is where we talk about what is the bane of my existence, which are going to be seams. First off, you're going to have seams if you're gluing two pieces of foam together. There is just no avoiding that. You're going to have seams. One of the holy grails of foam smithing is having a perfect seam. And it, it is possible, believe me, but it's a lot of trial and error and it's a lot of practice. What I normally do is I will line up my foam pieces by either the registration marks or the front and end of a cut, simply because as such as this, they're all an identical length. So therefore I don't need registration cuts. Once I get them lined up, what I'm doing is I'm lining up the outside edge, the visible edge of that foam. And the reason why I'm doing that is, is simply because I don't care if my seam is not perfect on the inside where no one's going to see it. I'm focusing on what's visible. So I'm lining up that outside edge, getting it to be as even and clean as possible. Then I'm just gently and lightly putting those seams together so the contact cement has the opportunity to grip. Once I've gotten it lined up, then I go back and then I re-push along that seam to make sure the contact cement is going to get a complete adhesion to itself. Now, in all honesty, I really don't need to worry too much about the seams for this helmet simply because once I've gotten the whole entire helmet put together, I'm just going to wrap it in two millimeter foam so you'll never see the seams at all. However, I'm still taking the opportunity to practice putting seams together to minimize those seams or the appearance of those seams as much as possible because as we all know, practice makes perfect. Now again, with looking for that holy grail of a perfect seam, there are going to be times where those seams are going to be visible. And there are things that you can do to minimize the appearance of those seams. And that's everything from sanding it down with a piece of sandpaper or a sanding sponge to using a Dremel, which is my preferred method. I will typically go over the seam with a regular sanding drum. Usually I'll do like an 80 grit. And then once I've done that, I'll take a stone bit and go back over it again so I can even out the texture of the foam um, from where I sanded it previously. The other thing that you can use is quick seal. And some people have had a huge success with quick seal. I tend to not. Um, I think I just, I just quite haven't gotten the hang of it yet, but you can apply quick seal along the seam and then feather it down and then, you know, go over it with your Plasti Dip. But again, because the textures are going to be different, I still think that they are quite apparent. Um, last but not least is using foam clay, which is what I'm going to be doing for my Lord of Blades cosplay. I'll be hiding a lot of those seams with the foam clay because there's going to be a texture applied. So therefore, that'll be relatively consistent. So there's a number of things that you can do to reduce those amount of seams. Again, one thing that you want to remember, you're going to see those seams much more clearly than anybody in a convention or looking at a picture. And it's because you're the one that put it together. So you know those seams are there. At this stage, the base structure is completely built, but unfortunately, I didn't manage to record three steps. I obviously cut off the top of the head. Now, I built it fully formed. I then eyeballed where my hairline would fall and just cut along that line. I made sure it wasn't perfect, so it would give it a slightly uneven fabric look. I also hot glued a thin strip of upholstery foam just above the eyes. This was going to make it sit more comfortably on my head and also give me a little bit of room between my eyes and the actual mask itself. Lastly, I recut the back of the helmet down along the center line. It occurred to me it's going to be a lot easier to get on and off if I clamshelled it instead of trying to slide it on and off. I think just some basic Velcro in the back will be more than enough to keep it on and I have an idea about how I can easily hide that seam. That little piece of foam is, believe it or not, my nose. It's a simple rectangle that was cut to narrow as it went towards the top for more of a better shape. I also dremeled down the edges at an angle so once I glued it to the mask it would sit a little more flush. Now believe it or not, I don't have a mirror down here, so let me show you how I made sure it actually went to where it was supposed to go.
The eyebrow ridge is nothing more than a quarter inch strip of five millimeter foam. I ran out of HD half dowels, which I need to remember to order. So I just cut down a single strip that I rounded down with an 80 grit sanding drum and then went back over it with a stone bit just to smooth it out a little bit further. So now it was time for the two millimeter to go on and to be honest with you, I had been dreading this step because I wasn't entirely sure how it was going to work. I knew I didn't have enough of a large piece of two millimeter that would wrap around the whole entire understructure as one piece. So instead, I opted to go with three pieces. One would be centered down the middle over the face, and then the other two would go to either the left and right of that and then meet in the back. Once I had the face piece centered and the eyebrow ridge roughly formed, I tacked it in at the very top and cut out space for the eyes in the two millimeter foam. I didn't want it moving or shifting when I was ready to completely start attaching the rest of the two millimeter foam to the understructure. The nice thing of having the two millimeter actually form around those large prominent pieces worked out really well because it means it would stay on the understructure as I started figuring out how much extra play I had in the two millimeter foam. So once I was happy with the larger features, I set about actually attaching the two millimeter foam to the mask itself. So I would lay down some contact cement on both pieces and then wait for it to start to tack up. Once it had tacked up, what I did is I started pinching the two millimeter foam together onto itself before attaching it to the understructure. This gave me the ability to be able to add in some folds and some creases and make sure that they weren't going anywhere when I was attaching them. I repeated the same process for the side pieces as well. Once that was done, I added a knot and two larger pieces that flared down the back center along that back seam, so it appeared to be tied, and hide the seam as well as the Velcro enclosure. Initially, I was just going to paint the black detailing in around the eyes, but somehow that just didn't feel like it was going to stand out enough. Instead, I decided to go with 2mm accents. I needed a quick pattern to determine the size and shape for them, so a great method that I always use is just laying down some tin foil over the existing structure and then duct tape on top of that, which ensures that you can actually cut it out and produce a quick, easy pattern. Once those were figured out, it was just a simple matter of heating them up and gluing them down in around the eyes. For not having very much of a plan, I was extremely excited with the way it came out. So with all the main construction complete, it was time to seal the foam. I thought about going with Mod Podge, but since I was clamshelling the mask, and it was pretty form-fitting, I decided two to three very light coats of Plasti Dip were the way to go. I decided I would hand paint on the base colors, simply because I wanted a little bit of an inconsistency in the coloring for the mask. So once the Plasti Dip had dried, I applied a coat of watered down Liquitex Heavy Body Mars Black. Now in doing this, it gives me a good foundation for the red to go on top because I didn't want it to be all that bright. Now I used a large mop brush to apply and to reduce the brush marks, I used an almost scrubbing motion to apply all the black. For the red, I used a non-watered down Liquitex Heavy Body Cadmium Red Medium. I used a smaller mop brush and I dabbed on two to three coats sporadically over the whole entire mask. It gave me some really nice darker and lighter spots that added some real dimensionality to the mask. I also thought I'd try something new with this. I haven't done much shading on much of my other builds, so I decided I was going to airbrush in some shadows on the mask. I used some Delta Ceram Coat Black in through my airbrush and then highlighted a lot of where the shadows would have laid on the mask. The last final step was to add in the eyes, which I used the cross-stitch plastic that was just simply hot glued onto the inside. Well, now that I got the mask built, obviously I got to finish building everything else. So I think next is probably going to either be his very large utility belt or the guns. I haven't quite decided as of yet, but in the meantime, I am going to go finish getting changed. And as usual, beg Sheila to take some pictures of me. Hope you enjoyed the build video. Hope you're enjoying the content that we're putting on Building Steam. If you do, make sure you're liking and subscribing. Hit the bell notification. We try to get these out every once a week. And as always, it's 
still don't know what to say at the end of these. So right now, I'll just say I'll catch you next time. And then I would do, you take it off. You got it? Yep. Like a little, like not all the way up, if you can. If you can just do like a, like I just had like a, you can do that. You know, like just like a da da da. -da. <laughs> Thank you, Sheila. That was so descriptive. Just a little da 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 da.